there. So quick recap of the diode from the very beginning. At the moment, this guy is forward biased or reverse biased? Um, in fact, let's make it a little bit easier to turn these guys off. Why is it reverse biased? Because the arrow head points the wrong way. Current is going to go clockwise or anti-clockwise? Uh, as the way this is set up. Clockwise. Clockwise. It's going to go from the plus around to the minus. So the current is definitely going to go in that direction, right? The diode, for the diode to work, it's expecting that that is at the head of the arrow. In other words, if the diode, if current is going to work here, that's going to be the head of the arrow, so it's as if there's an arrow going in that direction, right? So if the current is going that way, it will allow it to go through it. If it's not, it will. So very quickly, we dip it into the circuit and see what happens. Here it goes. And because the current is going that way, the diode will only allow current going that way. Nothing lights up. So we rotate it, and you get it working. So there's your simple diode. Current is going through here, and you get the um, you get the current flowing. This guy is called what? Not a resistor. LED. And what does LED stand for? Light emitting. So once again, this is the same as the last one. It's got a diode buried in the middle of it. Except it doesn't have a silver band, so how do we know which is the positive and which is the negative? The the and which is the longer end, you remember? Positive. positive. Okay, you don't have to remember this, but the long end is normally positive. So as it currently stands, it's not all that obvious. This guy here looks a little bit longer, but I'm only guessing. So it's the wrong way around. Once again, you rotate it. So a big advantage over normal light bulbs is what? <laughs> Uh, less energy is wasted than heat yeah, Much less electricity is going, giving off as waste. Much electricity is even needed to light it in the first place, so much less current. So it's, it's very inexpensive to use. However, as we've seen when we've, uh, when we've used them, and when you've done the demonstrations, uh, they don't give off as much light. So you need a heck of a lot of them together to give off as much light as a normal one. So this is what they look like. And we said every single one of these spars is an LED. So if you want the number 8 to light up, you're going to have to get that bar in there to light up also. That gives you the 8. These 6 on the outside gives you 10. These 2 give you 1. And these variation here gives you the 2. So on a digital display in a clock, you've got 8 LEDs for each number. And the different ones light up corresponding to the different digits. Okay? And that's all they use. That's what they look like. Each leg, each LED has one leg slightly longer than the other, demonstrating that one is positive and one is negative. So this is the experiment we're going to build on to today. We won't spend too much time at it, but all you have to see is as I increase the voltage, as I increase the voltage here, uh, I'm getting current. This is the light bulb. So as I increase the voltage to a light bulb, I get current. As I increase the voltage to an LED, I'm getting no current. Right? So in terms of the junction voltage that we spoke about the last day, we'll go into it in more detail later on, but not right now. What can I say about the, do I know anything about a junction voltage that I can say here? It's not great enough to move over the junction. So the junction voltage must be less than what? Or must be greater than what? 0.3. Must be greater than our We mustn't have reached the junction voltage yet. The junction voltage is when the voltage is able to drive the current straight through the depletion region. So we'll go back over that in more detail lately. But as soon as you reach the junction voltage here, this thing will start lighting up very quickly. So we mustn't have reached there yet. So we go to 0 0.56, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, still nothing happening. And at about 1.54, or 1.0, 1 1 as soon as it starts lighting, 1.12 in there, 1.6, 1 1.5, 1 we had it last time. So the junction voltage for this diode is about 1.6 volts. Less than that, no current will go through it. More than that, the current will start rising very rapidly. Does the current just build up behind it, or does it just not flow? Around? It just doesn't flow out. If it's a battery there, it doesn't. It, you're right to say, does it build up? Basically, the electrons are full in the wire. See, the electrons, it's like water in a canal. The electrons are full in this wire the whole way along. Whether there's a voltage coming from here or not, there's always remember, a little sea of electrons floating on the top of the wire. Yeah. And basically, this guy here is trying to push the electrons. But if they can't go anywhere here, they'll never leave the power supply to begin with. Right. Right? Yeah. Um, and our experiment here, if I, uh, where's our little graph here? Basically, the experiment that we'll be doing in a couple of minutes is a variation of this. We'll be looking at potential against voltage for a semiconductor diode. <coughs> and we will see what general shape should the graph have? It should be, it should be really flat and go up first. Really flat at the bottom until you reach a junction voltage. And as soon as you reach a junction voltage, at that stage, any small voltage increase will cause a big increase in current. And you get something like that. 
So we'd have to do that whole setup here and see what it, see how it works, and then you come in at Tarzan and you'll be doing it yourself. Okay. Um, once again, nice and quickly, this guy here is known as a light-dependent resistor. So when I shine light on it, what happens to its resistance, Richard? Uh, it decreases. Very good. So do we have, we don't have a multimeter, but we do just do have the light light. So resistance decreases, therefore it's easier for current to flow around the circuit. Uh, here, you don't have the light bulb, but you have the multimeter. So its resistance decreases, it drops right down when the light is shining over it. Alternatively, and Anthony, can we have another device rather than light to reduce the resistance? Mm -hmm. A thermistor. What does that use? Uh, increase the resistance. Okay, yeah, in that case you apply heat to it. So we come back to here, I turn the light on. We're going to very quickly look at these demonstrations here. <coughs> so, here folks, back down here, sir, if you don't mind, I need a multimeter. I measure resistance, so I set one to common and one to ohms, and I'm going to measure the resistance of a, what's this guy called? LED. Not LED. LDR. LDR, light dependent resistor. So you can, am I too close? You can get it there? Mm, a little close. Okay. Bring it back over here. Sorry. So, nice and quickly, measure the resistance of it. And to vary the light that it receives, what do we do, Karina? <coughs> or in this case, we have a light on it, so what can I do? Darker. Make it darker. How do we make it darker? Put it in your hand. Okay, just cover it my hand. So here you've got a resistor. Can you hold it just up like that? So, so it's reading two point, and it varies because even the sunlight and shadows is making a difference. But it's one point, whatever it is there. The big thing is, as soon as I cover it, what should happen? Its resistance decrease. It should increase. It should yeah, because made the two are inversely proportional. So as soon as I cover it here, you see its resistance going way up to four or thereabouts. I take it away, it goes back down. Nice and simple. We now do the same thing with a thermistor. Uh, Max, what do we do with a thermistor? Uh, change the resistance with temperature. With temperature. So in this case, just want to light it. <coughs> we have a resistance there of 0.71. We heat it nice and quickly. And its resistance should go up or down? Yeah. Go down and our resistance is now what, Sarah? You can focus on that. Oh. Were you focusing it on it the last time? Yeah. Okay, uh -huh. you can get its resistance. There you go, yeah. Okay, and it's, so all you need to see is its resistance drops way down. <coughs> From that, nice and quickly, we operate something called the polarity indicator here, which is this guy. You can switch that off, Karina, actually. I just need What's my... What's the use of an LDR? LDR is a light-dependent resistor. So basically, you would have it in a circuit, and the current... The resistance in the circuit will change if light shines on it, yes? Mm. And if the resistance changes and you've got a fixed potential difference, what else will change? Mm. The current. So let's say the resistance was to drop. Why would the resistance drop? The resistance would drop if light shined on it. So you might have it, like I said, in some sort of an alarm, in a vault, where there should be no light. If somebody inadvertently opens a door, lets light shine on it, the resistance of the LDR will go up or down. The resistance will go to activate an alarm or some description. So that's just one possible, a simple applic application of it. 